Let me know when I'm supposed to start the meeting. Okay, Chairperson, it's all yours. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, hope everybody had a happy new year, healthy one. Um, public participation. Is there anyone listening in that wants to say something? Nope. Nope. No one Dave? online. Okay. Uh, in terms of the, the scene, uh, the, uh, town council, uh, we, uh, met at a special meeting the last time you attempted to meet. Uh, so uh, none of us, uh, neither of us uh, who are liaisons could be at the meeting. Um, that meeting and the subsequent one had to do with setting up, uh, uh, doing end of the year things that had to be uh, voted on uh, before new year came. Uh, also uh, to uh, finalize uh, the plans for selecting a new town manager. And as you probably all know, I don't know whether I've said this before or not, because uh, James Skrapinski has volunteered to um, be the acting town manager during that lengthy period of time. Uh, the uh, process is, is uh, started and ongoing. And at uh, the next council meeting and future ones, you'll hear about how the process is going on, um, uh, as opposed to giving details now. Uh, we've, uh, except to say uh, we have uh, selected a recruiting firm that uh, uh, is going to go through the process of uh, gaining candidates and and uh, uh, preparing a form uh, in which to uh, uh, help them attempt to elect it uh, to uh, select whoever. And at some point, it will be narrowed down to either five or or three candidates, and then they will come before the council. Uh, in a meeting outside of a council meeting to uh, to be interviewed, and then a selection will be made. But it will be it will be quite a while. Uh, the process doesn't go smoothly. So I, I that's that's it. And the second uh, council meeting was uh, canceled, um, so we did not meet uh, the fourth uh, uh, Tuesday of the month. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, staff report, Jamie. Hi, thank you. Um, the center remained very busy, very productive through the month of December. Um, commissioners and liaisons should have received the uh, monthly report earlier today, the full report, but I can go through some of the details. Uh, we had a full list of programs as we typically would. Um, in December, a lot of them were holiday themed. We were very festive this year with various craft classes, a gingerbread house class. Um, they made um, door hangings like out of pine. They made various um, cards and crafts. We had a special holiday congregate lunch, which was extremely well attended. Um, we also had some non-holiday um, events such as a European history class, which is held via Zoom and has a great following. Um, we had a, a, an overview of the Connecticut court system, which is very well attended. COVID did hit a bit in December, both staff and, um, and presenters. Unfortunately, two programs did have to be canceled due to COVID. They were both holiday themed, so we didn't reschedule them at this point, but we'll look to do them sometime in the future. Um, the gift shop and the coffee shops continued to operate very successfully. Um, the coffee shop is open each Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for a light breakfast and a light lunch. Um, the volunteers are very dedicated and do a great job and they have quite a following. 
We are looking at expanding the menu and bringing back some menu items that were here pre-pandemic that had previously been a little bit cost prohibitive. Um, we don't look to make a big profit off of the coffee shop, but we definitely need to cover our expenses and keep prices low. So the coffee shop had some closures in December um, because, again, of COVID and volunteers and a little bit of shortage, but they did about $439, which is not bad at all, considering a cup of coffee is 75 cents. Um, the gift shop will continue to be very successful in December. It's open Monday through Friday, 11 to 1, 10 to 1, 10 to 1, Monday through Friday. Um, December sales, they are open December 1st through December 22nd. Um, they did $1,700 for the month, so a lot of Christmas shopping going on there. The gift shop was closed in the week between Christmas and New Year's, as it usually is, because they reset the inventory and give the volunteers a bit of a break. So it's reopened now, and we look forward to a successful winter for both. Um, staff is continuing to focus on outreach strategies to increase community awareness of the center, um, both to the younger, older adults, as we call it, even though it's a bit of a mouthful, but the folks who may not be quite retired yet, the younger disabled adults, and also to those who may be underserved and not aware of our services. Um, Barbara, who is our program coordinator and Terry Snyder, our social worker, visited um, one of the housing, the senior housing units um, in December and gave a very thorough presentation. We got a couple of people signing up for the center because of that, which is fantastic. They plan to visit all the various senior housing sites in um, the town in the next, uh, probably over the winter, over the next couple of months as their, um, as their schedules allow. What we figure at this point is it's going to be a lot of work just to get some results here and there. We're not gonna have any one group that's gonna have a hundred people sign up, but if we get a handful of people from each place that are aware of us and they could help spread the word, then we're reaching more people. Uh, speaking of COVID, we had a booster and vaccine clinic on December 1st in conjunction with the health district. I mentioned at the last meeting, um, it was open to anybody ages 18 and up. We took about 50 appointments, but we also took walk-ins um, and there were over 150 participants and they had all of the boosters and all of the COVID vaccines available. Um, the bus trip committee was very busy. They are planning their 2023 trips. They don't usually do much in January, February, because the weather often doesn't cooperate, but trips will resume in March. Um, they have a St. Patrick's Day luncheon at the Aquaturf on March 14th, and they have a trip to the Thomaston Playhouse on May 7th. And all the other trips, including some casino trips, are in progress and will be announced soon. As always, we focus on folks who can't make it to the center because either of COVID or other upper respiratory illnesses, or they're just not comfortable attending or they're unable to attend. We continue to offer telephone-based programs, hybrid programs, and Zoom programs. And a little later in the meeting, I do have a proposal for a purchase that could help us with that. Um, lunch is very busy as, a, as, it becomes, as it is now. It's become very busy again. Meals on Wheels continues to just increase and increase. The need out there has really um, been significant. About 1,100 hot meals are delivered each month. There's between 58 and 63 residents who receive Meals on Wheels each day. And it's mostly done by volunteers with just a little bit of help from staff. So it's very impressive. Social work, energy assistance, renters, rebate programs are in full swing. Um, we are still concerned about, although oil prices have come down a bit, there is still quite a bit of concern with the um, energy assistance and the need this year being quite increased over past years um, due to the increase in the oil prices, um, a prediction of a, of a cold winter, which thankfully hasn't panned out yet, and a reduction in available um, aid to members through the state. So Karen Halper is our is our coordinator for that, and she has worked tirelessly to get through huge piles of applications. She handles all of the applications and the paperwork and determines the eligibility, and then the paperwork goes over to the community renewal team for funding. So that continues. Um, I had a meeting with State Representative um, Gary Turco earlier in, the, in December, and he did state that there should be some good news coming down for that in terms of funding that um, hopefully will be released that can help ease the burden for a lot of folks this winter of any age, not just older adults. We did began preparing our departmental budget request for next fiscal year. It was actually due today at 4.30 um, and it has, been, it has been submitted. I could talk about that when it comes up on the agenda. Um, the giving garden was all cleaned up for the year. 
window project is ongoing. I don't have any updates on that. We had a broken drain right outside of the cafeteria and the roof, a broken roof drain, and it was causing a leak. So um, town facilities took care of that. And then I just had a bunch of meetings with various um, organizations and groups for statewide planning. And that is my report. Sounds exciting. <laughs> you guys are busy. We always are. Day goes by fast. That's good. Um, we have old business and uh, I guess you can talk about the budget now. Sure. So as mentioned, our budget was submitted today along with an, our budget, our departmental budget request for the town manager was submitted today along with our narrative page and our proposed uh, personnel numbers. The personnel numbers have not changed. Um, as you know, the way it works is we submit our budget request to the town manager. The town manager may work with the finance department and anybody else to make any changes. And that budget is then submitted to the town council for approval. Uh, for debate and approval, usually early March. The previous town manager has sent out a budget memo um, indicating that we should try for a 0% budget increase. Um, so we took that seriously. And if you want to be technical, we have decreased our proposed budget by $25 over last year. So uh, in grand total, we made no um, significant changes to our budget other than changing some line items, adjusting to trend, uh, things like our cable bill, small items. Nothing adjusted more than a couple of hundred dollars either way. We did remove a line item that was $1,000 for a point of sale system for the main office, which was something a previous commission had charged us with doing because we did find a no cost option through our software, My Senior Center, which is what our administrative software we use for membership tracking. Um, there is a no cost uh, point of sale and money tracking that we can use for the main office. It'll be available starting our new fiscal year, July 1st. So that saves us a little money. And we feel that we can, we're can. we in good shape. We're in great shape with donations, with income streams from the coffee shop, gift shop, and, and donations, um, gym memberships, and all that. We feel that we're in good position to operate efficiently and operate very well with a 0% increase next uh, fiscal year. <laughs> yes, sorry. I'm looking for What was that comment? I missed it. <laughs> Commissioner Nagel has her hand raised, but I was looking for her in the room. Okay. <laughs> You're muted, Commissioner Nagel. Oh, Commissioner. Oh, she might be gone. Oh, is she off of the meeting or is she just lose no, video? No, she just shut off her video. Okay. Okay. My question is someone told me that they brought stuff to the gift shop. And they didn't get any check, and I just wanted to let them know when checks are sent out. Checks are done quarterly. So if okay. they had brought the gift shop, so the gift shop opened in October. So the first quarter checks would probably be processed. I believe our volunteer who runs the gift shop was actually compiling the reports. So if the items that that person brought forth sold, then she should expect the check, I'd say, within the month in one of the upcoming check runs. If they didn't no. sell, of course, then they would continue to be in the shop. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Along. Anyone else? Okay. If not, consideration to recommend amendment to the code of ordinances. This is about reducing membership of the commission from nine to seven members since the um, charter changed the ruling. The, am I explaining Correct. that right? Correct. So um, we, this have is to, we have to have a discussion and a vote to send to the uh, town council to ask them to consider that. Correct. So we're asking the town council, as you said, to consider um, initiating the ordinance change process to, to do that because it is no longer, it no longer says nine members shall have nine members in the charter. It now says it's per ordinance and the ordinance says nine members. So we need to amend the ordinance, which is um, section 8-16 of the code of ordinances. I actually wrote a resolution, but I apologize that I only have it in paper form. I should have put it on the computer so we could share it on the screen, but the commissioners that are here 
have a draft ordinance if the commission wishes to consider it. Somebody could read it and second it who's here. Um, it's, you know, if you want to do that, if you want to discuss it or whatever you'd like to do. But I do have a draft ordinance available that has the language of what needs to be done. I mean, a draft resolution, I'm sorry, that has um, the language of what you need to do to refer to the town council. Okay, so I think before we read the resolution, maybe we should have a little discussion. Or do you want to read the reg resolution first and then discuss it? However you'd like to do it is fine with me. Anyone have any suggestions? All right, then why don't we start it, Jamie, with you when you read the resolution? A commissioner would need to make to read the okay. resolution as a motion. Okay. So motion to read the resolution. You would just read it, what you would say, you just read it out as it is. And then if somebody wishes to second it, they would just say second. So you're making the motion by reading it. Okay. okay. So Noington Commission on Aging and Disabled. Resolution to recommend amendment to code of ordinances, uh, such subsection or section 8-15, uh, Commission on Aging and Disabled Membership Terms, January 4th, 2023. Whereas subsection or section? Statute. Statute. It's, it's section, section. Okay. 8-15 of the note. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Wait, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Top Manager. I just added the language is currently in place so that anybody online would have a reference to what you're reading. Okay, just for clarity, is it subsection or uh, just section? section. section. Yes. Thank you. So, whereas section 8 15 of the Newington Code of Ordinances establishes a commission on aging and disabled, and whereas section 8 16 of the Code of Ordinance states in part that the commission shall be comprised by nine members. And whereas over the past several years, the commission on aging and disabled has struggled to maintain adequate membership numbers to meet the required quorum of five commissioners in attendance at its meetings. And whereas on November 8th, 2022, the town of Newington voted to adopt amendments to the town charter including an amendment to charter section C-608, which removes language requiring a specific membership number for the commission on aging and disabled. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the commission on aging and disabled hereby requests that the Newington Town Council commence the process to amend section 8-16 of the code of ordinances as follows. Change the commission membership from nine to seven members. Would any would anyone like to discuss that? You need to second it. We would like if a commissioner we have to second it second. first. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. And now we can have a discussion. So I agree totally with the idea. Um, we've had we've missed. A lot of meetings, we have trouble getting people appointed to the commission. Um, I don't know what's going on. People don't like to volunteer. Um, but so we seem to have some really good members now. And if we could have a quorum, if just we could still have a quorum if just one person can is unavailable, that would be really good. We could have a meeting. Does anyone else have anything to say? Any feelings about that? I also agree with it. I think that we definitely need to get a number of, that we can have a quorum each time so we can meet each time because it's important. Yeah, I wholly agree also in that, you know, you have, you have important business that you have to maintain or do, or you've got to keep moving forward. And if we get stalled for months and months and months, then that doesn't help the, um, the, uh, the center. And if we do happen to get some more commission members appointed, then that would see, that's even better, but at least we can do our business. So um, anyone else like to say anything? Okay. Is there any, I can't tell if there's anyone on the lines who wants to say something. 
No. I, I have a query. Um, so, uh, if someone were go if, if we were to go from nine to seven members, where the if the town council goes ahead and um, approves that, and let's say we get a sudden splurge of interest, and and suddenly we go to let's say back to nine members. I'm a little confused as to how if we go to from nine to seven members and suddenly we get more interest, does that open the way to go for another uh for an increase up and beyond or beyond and upwards of seven members? An ordinance change process is uh can be accomplished over the course of like I think three town council meetings. Um, and a, a public hearing. So if we should get so lucky in the future and there's people banging on the door wanting to be on our commission, that's fantastic. We can, this, this the commission could certainly ask the town council to consider an amendment to the ordinance. I think that's probably the reason that they took it out of the charter and put it into the ordinances because it's a much easier process to change an ordinance. Although you're not gonna do it every month, um, it can certainly happen with a little bit of effort. So this would not be a, unchangeable permanent thing that is set in stone forever if a future group would wish to change it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? We didn't hear from Jerry Lynn. Does she have anything to say? No, nope, I agree. I okay, do. good. Okay. So um, we should take a vote. So all in favor of the uh, passing the ordinance? Aye. 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 Any nays? No. So pass, it passes. So Jamie, do you take care of it? and present it to the town council? How does it work yes. now? I will pass it along to the town council staff. Um, I didn't, I failed to, um, to mention when we started this meeting, I said it beforehand, we do have somebody who's taking minutes for this meeting. So we'll, we'll pass along the minutes and a copy of the, uh, of the approved resolution to the town council staff. And then it's up to the town council when they'd like to take it up or if they'd like to take it up. Okay. <laughs> I feel better already. <laughs> um, Dave, how do you feel about that? I foresee no problem. Uh, of course, I can only speak for myself as a member of the council, but I've heard, uh, I haven't heard anything about anyone not wanting to have this happen. So if the process goes along, I, I would think that the council would agree to it. And then it would have to go through the process uh, to uh, uh, officially make the ordinance uh, possible. Uh, but I don't foresee it uh, being a problem at all with the council. Okay, great. Okay. Um, we're now on new business, upcoming activities. Jamie? Sure. Um, I want to say our staff has for the new year has some quantitative and qualitative goals. And one of the um, qualitative goals is to really focus on our mission statement to improve the well-being of older adults and adults with disabilities in the community. So they really are framing our upcoming activity planning based on those dimensions of wellness. And I have to really say our program coordinator, Barb Womer, has gone above and beyond, has done an excellent job planning programs. So specifically in January, um, trying to see on my phone, we have a lunch and learn coming up for mental health awareness and self-care on January 24th. We have um, a couple, our art and craft classes have taken off really big since the pandemic. We have a paint and sip class tomorrow morning that I know is full. <coughs> Excuse me, our, our volunteer Rose, who also does the gift shop. She's very art, artistic. She's doing a card class on January 20th. We have, we're doing a lot of um, focus on finances, especially this time of year. And we have a class coming up on preventing Medicare fraud. Um, we are starting a new series this week, Achieve Optimum Well-Being at Any Age. 
in which participants watch a series of videos um, on well-being, different well-being topics and healthy living topics, and then hold a facilitated discussion. Um, we have kind of brain health classes. So there's a puzzle logic class coming up. Um, we have something about Relay Connecticut, which is a, ser a, a service to make and receive calls for those who are hard of hearing or have hearing impairments. And we even have a program coming up on birds of prey, which I'm trying to get the details here, on January 29th so from the Audubon Society, we're actually going to have um, somebody there to talk about raptors and eagles, and it should be pretty fun. Um, so as you can see, there's a really good mix of things for mental health, physical health, um, emotional health, fun, creativity. We try to hit all of those dimensions. Um, it's also almost tax season, fortunately or unfortunately, depending how you look at it. And we are meeting next week with the AARP volunteers to get the tax program set up. I fully anticipate um, that we will fully operate our to our volunteer run tax program for residents this year, um, which last year served over 200 people prepared simple tax returns for free with a contingent of about eight to 10 volunteers. Um, and as I mentioned earlier in my report, we are continuing our outreach, um, particularly, I guess, at our focus this winter is on those who live in senior housing. So we'll continue planning that. And uh, that's what we have coming up. Okay. And I think you already mentioned the uh, building update in yeah, your report. Not our not a lot to report. The window pro, um, project is still on hold. The facilities and parks and IT do a great job of keeping us uh, safe and warm and welcoming. Okay. Uh, consideration of upcoming purchases. Okay. So I alluded to this earlier and I mentioned it very briefly at the last meeting. But we do have a proposal for the commission to consider either tonight or at the next meeting, depending on your comfort level. And it does have to do with um, equipment to be able to hold hybrid meetings um, and hybrid programs in the senior center. Um, as you know, our commission's meeting over here because we don't have a proper, really good hybrid setup to, for meetings where we have participants online. We do hybrid programs often, but our setup is far from ideal and it's very labor intensive. And I do think it has some shortcomings in terms of people at home who may not be able to hear or see us well. So the library started to use something called the OWL system. Um, and it basically what it is, it's, the, it's a device for virtual and hybrid meetings or programs. It is literally a device I can't really see, but it sits in the middle of the room or somewhere in the room. And what it has is a 360 degree camera, microphone and sound system with an up to 18 foot radius, depending on which, which um, equipment you choose. And it connects wirelessly to the laptop or computer or tablet or whatever you're using in the meeting or program. And it works with all meeting platforms. So like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, we typically use Zoom, but occasionally we do find ourselves using, um, participating in meetings at, with Microsoft Teams and other uh, platforms when it's an outside person doing the meeting. Um, so basically it has some features where it modulates voice and sound and um, it the camera can zoom. The camera can also be locked if you wanted to focus on somebody. Um, it has all the same features such as the mute and turning camera off and on. For whatever this means, it has a 1080p output resolution. Um, we think it will be useful for, again, true hybrid meetings for this commission and other groups to be held at the senior center. Um, but arguably more importantly, it'll help us have more immersive hybrid, thank you, hybrid programs, very helpful. Uh, there, that's a nice, there you go. More immersive hybrid programs so we can reach people who are homebound, we can reach people who just aren't comfortable coming in. We can reach people maybe who are um, in uh, rehab, assisted living, nursing homes, who are members and we don't want to lose them. On the end user side, so if we were to do a program at the center, we would have that physical equipment set up. Um, it's all wireless and it's Wi-Fi based. Um, we would have it all set up. But on the user side, the folks at home using the programs, it would just be, there would be no difference, no change to them. They would just use whatever device they would normally use. So we know the library has been using it. They had a little bit of a learning curve, but it's gone well. Um, we would like to propose also purchasing that system for our use at the senior center. The cost is depending on which options we choose, which I would ask IT for their input, would be between $1,000 and $1,200 
for everything you see on the screen there. Uh, it's a one-time fee. There's no subscription or anything such as that. And I think it would make really, it, you know, it's a little bit of money, but I think it would be a good and sound investment for us moving forward, understanding that this is how hybrid is the way that we're going to go from now on. I have a question. Um, actually, I love the idea, but is there a maximal number of people that can zoom in or uh, that would just be, nope, it would just be determined by whatever platform you use. So it would connect to the, the items you see on the screen would connect to our, say where I was using a laptop to do a program. It would connect to that laptop. And I'd say I was using Zoom. The, any um, maximum number of people that could connect in remotely would just be based on what Zoom platform we're using. In terms of people in the room, it has up to an 18 foot radius, depending on what we choose. So I would say a room such as this I think it would probably be able to hit anybody in the room. Um, again, I'd have to figure out exactly how we would use it, but it has, again, a 360-degree rotating camera and sound system. So there really is no limit as long as they're within the radius. If I might give some input to that, having uh, I'm also the one of the liaisons to the library board, and they've used the system in the community room, and it picks up everyone in the community room, and they have more members than, uh, than are on this board. Uh, and uh, it appears to be, there are little problems every once in a while, but it, it appears to be uh, working quite well. Didn't take them long to, to figure out how to effectively use it. That's good news. Um, right now, when we do a remote program, we are just using our laptops, um, which does cause issue, depending on which devices we use, you need to speak directly into the laptop to, to you know for the microphone to work effectively so we have some complaints about folks who ne can't necessarily hear well at home i think this would eliminate that and cause it to be much more immersive for um people to participate Is it i portable? i love the idea of it who who's next who said that uh, I, it was kathy i was just asking if it was portable or to, or do you have to set it up in a specific room and it stays in that room it's portable. It would have to be because we have various programs in various rooms. So it's portable and wireless. Any other questions? Just based upon your previous uh, question about amount of individuals that could connect, our current accounts through Zoom allow for 500 participants either through meetings or webinars. Oh, wow. So you can reach a, a very large that. swath of individuals. <laughs> <No>. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Fantastic, but no, we're not hitting that. <laughs> All right. Well, would someone like to make a motion? Um, I'll make a motion that we that we approve it to be purchased. How how about the amount? Up to twelve hundred dollars or whatever yeah. IT recommends? Right. Okay, is that all in favor? You need, you need a, a second, second, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Commissioner France seconded. Okay. Any more discussion? I have one more thing. Does that come with service if something goes down or is that extra? I believe the um, service is included. The, the technical support is included, but I will definitely double check before we make that purchase. Okay. Um, Thank you. Good thought. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? So carries. Okay. Um, what's next on the agenda? Oh, the next meeting date and agenda. Were there any other purchases before we move on? Not at this meeting, no. Okay. I have just so, a question, because I know the last meeting you were looking at the dishwasher, so I just don't know if that was still in process or that the is, kitchen. That's still in process. I would still, it's still my goal to get a dishwasher in there if this commission approves. Um, what we're, I'm working in facilities. There's some issues with potential weather um, I don't know the technical terms, but the electricity, if the power is adequate, 
in that area. Okay. So I'll when I get some more info, I'll send it out to the commission and consider it then. But I'm hopeful we could have something by the next meeting to give you. Okay. Thank you. That's why I asked. I remembered there was something. I just couldn't remember. I don't have my notes with me, so I didn't remember what it was. Um, okay, so term, determination of the next meeting date and agenda. The next date would be 2-1. Now, I will be out of the country, so I will not be able to join. So if our new member doesn't um, swear in or the council doesn't um, approve, which I doubt would happen in one month, um, I don't know, I guess we wouldn't be able to have a meeting. Um, so the, the, our office submitted the regular meeting schedule for 2023 to the town clerk's office. So the regular meetings are scheduled for 6 p.m. the first Wednesday of each month, except for July and August when the commission typically doesn't meet. So if this commission, if we don't think we're going to have a quorum on February 1st, um, we could find out, you know, about the new member and, and see if other folks are available or not available, then we would cancel this February 1st meeting and we could schedule a special meeting, which is what we've been doing all along anyway. <clears throat> okay. So we'll have to wait till it gets closer and see what happens. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. Okay, um, public participation? Anyone? No public on with us. Okay, guess the meeting is adjourned. Thank you everyone for attending. It's well, nice seeing you. Hope you all had a happy new year. Happy new year, everybody, thank you. Happy new year. So show me how to end the video. I know you I've had an end of the video.